Hey guys, welcome back to Tech360. And it's kind of noisy down there because it's just a busy day and I have the most noisiest studio. But yes, I have a set of new lenses and I for one have not been much of a prime lens type of shooter. I've always preferred zoom lenses due to the bulk of what I do, which is usually for run and gun type of situations where getting another angle of focal length is crucial when it comes to capturing moments that simply just can't be done with a simple retake. While most sign lenses are manually focused, I have here with me of Samyang's latest full frame VAF series. And I've got to say prime lenses are the way to go if you care enough about what your footage looks like that most zoom lenses just can't emulate. At this time of this video's release, there's just these three, which are the T1.9 35 mm 24 mm and also the 75 mm and one each of this costs less than $700, which is about less than 3,000 Malaysian ringgit. So yes, a really great bargain. So for those wondering, what's the difference between F-stop and T-stop? Well, F-stop is the measure for photo lenses, while T-stop is the measurement for sign lenses. Depending on how many elements are within a lens, the amount of light that passes through the aperture blades do tend to lose some of it through refraction or reflection, which means a sensor won't ever get 100% transmission ratio. That's why we have our ISO options to manage the sensitivity of our sensor. And yes, in this case, it's gonna show you f1.8 on your camera. So yeah, maybe I'll make a separate video explaining more about that, and maybe I hope Samyang can sponsor it. But yes, these lenses were phenomenal when it came to documenting a close friend of mine prepping for her performance at a local music festival. And there were many moments where I had to switch between using the camera handheld, placing it on a fly cam or a gimbal, because my biggest worries when it comes to using prime lenses are purely because of the weight differences that could alter gimbal's balance when I set all of it up as changing focal lengths would ultimately mean recalibrating things altogether due to different glass elements within each lens that affects the overall weight of the camera. But it wasn't the case here with these lenses. They were super convenient despite them being different focal lengths. All of them are exactly the same size and weigh only 0.6 pounds or approximately 280 grams. So a very lightweight and compact structure while also having a feature that I personally never seen before on a lens which is a built-in LED tally lamp at the front and side mount index. I don't know about you but that feature alone is super convenient for self-shooters like myself. Even though some newer or cinema-based cameras already have their own tally lamp built in, Older cameras like my a7 III didn't come equipped with one, so I already can't imagine so many other creators who might appreciate this feature too. So thank you Samyang for thinking to a small but very significant detail. It's not ridiculously bright till it would leak into any footage or any kind as the front LED is embedded quite deep inside of the metal accessory mount. And if you were to look closely, you can see these contact points to which I have no information at this point as to what accessories can actually be attached to this, but I am sure it has something to do with a feature that could take advantage of these two mode switches, which I'll get into in just a second. My guess is that these contact points could either suit for an additional electrically controlled variable ND that could be controlled by the focus ring or something that's less exciting like an additional front element to give a wider aspect like Sony's F2 plus it's a uh, plus of fish eye maybe. So an interesting combination, but I have a feeling that it won't be too helpful for video use considering how vignetting or having it affect um, the focus breathing altogether. So yeah, I'm really hoping that variable ND alternative could be something they do because as far as I know, there's no lens out there that could do such a thing. But yes, these two mode switches are very handy themselves for having the option for aperture priority or having it act as your usual focus ring, depending on what your camera is set for. 
but since it's an autofocus sign lens, having a fast control really helped me the most when it came to transitioning from rooms or stage lights that constantly dimmed up and down or when my subject was backlit behind a bright background. Additionally, there's also a focus hole button and the functions can be assigned through Samyang's lens station. Other benefits that I've noticed which are very surprising for the lenses at this price range is its focused breathing that is usually very prominent in most zoom lenses yet shows very minimal travel here. Samyang also suggests that they were made for 8K resolution. I don't exactly know what they mean by that but probably because of how sharp these lenses are and I can confirm that yes, these lenses are very sharp. Kind of reminds me of a lot of Sigma and their art lenses in some way, but to be fair, new age lenses of today's standards and the look you get from more vintage ones are subjective to each user anyway. If you're keen to see some of the specification details, here's just a few to begin with to their respective values in viewing angles for both full frame and super 35. But if adamant in seeing further details such as rotation or focused breathing angles, do check in the link description and below and also where you can buy these lenses if you're interested. Autofocus is great for most parts and really does feel native to Sony's E-mount with just a little inconsistency every now and then, especially in the 75mm, it's also very quiet and none of my experience with all three had any audible sounds. Other than that, the minimum focus distance is less than 0.7 meters, so you could actually get close to subjects and still have the autofocus range. My only gripe with these lenses was the throw you get when in manual mode gets up to 300 degrees and wish there was some indicator that I've reached infinity or some sort of click when it's in aperture mode like some G Masters the lenses do. Then again, I could be asking way too much. Overall, it's a very smooth focus ring, but might just take some muscle memory to get really used to it. So as mentioned before, they're all just under 700 US dollars. But to be more specific, the 24 millimeter costs uh, 3,099 ringgit and the 35 millimeter and 75 millimeter is at 2,890 ringgit. I'll also leave a price in dollars next to it. So yeah. Just for context, Sony's FE 35mm goes for 2,899 Malaysian Ringgit and their G Master 35mm f1.4 is more than double the price of it. So if you're out to look for a fast prime lens with some additional features that's yet to be seen on any other manufacturer, do give these Samyang BAF series a look because I can't recommend them enough for the build quality and weight. Really something that I believe that most videographers would learn to appreciate just because of like, everybody loves fast lenses and having autofocus built in and a tally lamp and whatever else that Samyang might be coming with that accessory mount, who knows? This could be a game changer if all I care. But yeah, that's my full review of the VAF lenses. Check out all the links below if you need any information, extra information. And yes, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.